I'm currently joined by Mayor of Cold Lake, Mr. Craig Copeland. So, Craig, welcome to the show. Well, thanks for having me. So looking back at the last year in Cold Lake, I wanted to open with something somewhat recent, which has to do with your re-election back in September. So as you progress into your fifth term at the helm of this city, I was just wondering if you had any priorities or things you were excited about heading into 2022. Well, if a person had a magic wand, I would get rid of COVID, but, uh, you know, it, it has... Uh... You know, hopefully we can get that uh, the virus under control and, and move forward because it really has impacted uh, not only our community, but everybody across the world. Um, so hopefully, you know, in 2022, we can move forward. Uh, we've got a lot of exciting projects in terms of construction uh, and try to stimulate the economy. We did that uh, back in uh, 2021. We, we put a lot of uh, money out there for uh, projects, hoping not only local businesses, uh, construction companies will get the work, which they did. A lot of them were successful, but just to you know, put a lot of money towards, uh, you know, a lot of different projects in the city. And we're going to continue that going forward in 22. Uh, we have some big, a major road work that we got to do on what's called Lakeshore Drive, which is right along the, the marina. Uh, our bank there is sort of falling into the water. So we've got to stabilize that, fix the underground, so water and sewer on that, uh, that location. So that'd be a big project. And of course, we're going to try to start uh, our public workshop uh, and yeah, because our, our, our staff do an amazing job um, recently with this huge snowfall, they just did, you know, hit it out of the park with our contractors. And we want to start putting uh, money and start building our new public workshop. So it's sort of this, you know, started 22 and we've engaged a company to work with the community in terms of a uh, vision for the aquatic center. So that'll be a big uh, project in 22 is to engage uh, the user groups and the community and kind of what do they want to see in a pool and then council will have to figure out how, how do we afford it. And though you did mention some of the pandemic related hurdles from the last year, I was just wondering if you could draw on some specific challenges that we're seeing within Cold Lake. Well, I think uh, everybody is, of course, uh, concerned about getting COVID. Um, you know, our vaccination rates are, are lower than the provincial average, but uh, people got to realize our community is really young. Uh, we're 24% of our community is 14 and under. So um, there has been a lot of hesitation about getting vaccinated. We, we realize that it's up to people's choice on, on getting vaccinated. So, of course, you know, right now, unfortunately, our numbers are quite high uh, per capita in the province for COVID. Um, and hopefully that can come down. There's a lot of restrictions in place. You know, how it's impacted the community, certainly the business community has really took it on the chin. Uh, you know, our hotels and our food uh, businesses, uh, retail, uh, it, it's been tough on everybody. But certainly the food industry and hotels, I would say, you know, are, having, are struggling. Um, and also there's a big, huge issue with manpower. We're just not getting enough people uh, out there working in, 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 the, in the soft service industry. Uh, and so, uh, you know, the food industry, they're, they're looking at just opening up drive through because they just cannot uh, have enough staff to have walk in. And so it's a struggle right now to get, uh, to get help. I think we really need to look at uh, the foreign worker program and open that uh, spigot up again and get uh, get foreign workers to come into our community. I mean, Cold Lake has an amazing amount of Filipino uh, community here. Uh, and uh, we also have other nationalities that are here in Cold Lake working and they just love it. And uh, we love them. And, and I think the province needs to really open up that and get more workers here to our community. But, uh, you know, you know, right now, the, um, the oil industry seems to be uh, trying to put their money towards uh, share buybacks, their debt. And we're not seeing a huge uh, amount of money in terms of new development uh, in the oil patch. But I think that uh, 2022, that'll happen. And our big project that we're looking forward to in, uh, in soon here is going to be uh, the federal government, uh, the new fighter jet. I think that in 2022, let's identify, let's get our men and women a, a new plane for our country. Um, they've been driving, you know, flying that plane for many, many years. And uh, I think it's they're long overdue to, to identify what plane we're going to have for our country and move forward. Then to close things off with a bit of a positive, open-ended question, I was just wondering if you could touch base on some of your maybe favorite memories or just positives from the last year within Cold Lake. I think our council at uh, last term put a lot of files uh, to bed. Uh, we had some, you know, a lot of uh, 
issues with sort of municipal funding in terms of uh, the air weapons range or ID 349. And that concluded with our MLA and with the Minister of Municipal Affairs on a, on a, on a longstanding agreement now between ourselves, the MD of Bonneville, uh, the, the town of Bonneville and the village of Glendon. And, and it's, a, it's, a, it's a, you know, unique uh, deal. Uh, the air weapons range is now going to, is now amalgamated into the MD of Bonneville and, and money will be flowing from that area into the three municipalities. And so it's really exciting that that file is now uh, put to bed. And, I'll, and then we've done our ICF, the Intermunicipal Collaboration Framework with the MD of Bonneville. And so that, that provides funding into our city for recognizing MD residents uh, impact on our community. So, you know, that file is uh, finished. And then of course, the big one was the water line. It was the largest provincial money spent in, in this part of the area. And so uh, now there's you know fresh coal lake drinking water going out all the way down to town of Monteville and for others now can tap into the line. It's been identified for 100,000 people can be on that coal lake water. And so that, that project uh, completed. Uh, and so, you know, a lot of files got completed last term and now uh, council has to reset and maybe look at, at champion certain causes. One of them of course will be a highway 28. Uh, it's, it's, I call it the forgotten highway. And uh, we really need to at least establish passing lanes from Edmonton to, uh, to Coal Lake on Highway 28. Thanks so much for your time, Craig.